Hi everyone, this is our final video in the library orientation video series and today we're going to be looking at periodical databases. These are databases like JSTOR, OmniFile, things that give access to articles published in peer-reviewed journals and academic publications online. Now we've been doing a lot of preliminary research through reference databases, through books and ebooks online, and for some research projects, that can give you enough to go on. Um, but for really any kind of in-depth research uh, where you want to look at what scholars are saying today related to your topic, to see what other academics have been publishing about your given topic, these periodical databases are the best place to get that research. Uh, and again, like everything else, you want to access those databases through the Rosemont Library website through online resources, and then we go straight to electronic databases. Now again, depending on what subject area you're looking at, you can go straight to uh, that particular subject area to find what databases are listed there. And it'll be different for every subject area. Some have more than others. So if you're looking for, say, education, uh, here are some databases related. Education Week, which is a national newspaper, uh, ERIC, which is a free uh, database sponsored by the US Department of Education, uh, and this is you know, similarly mapped out for different subject areas. Where you're going to spend most of the time, though, I think, is in these multi-subject databases. So as I showed you with the eBooks, we have links to those collections here and some other related um, online collections like ArtStore Digital Library. But really, the biggest um, databases that we subscribe to are these ones, JSTOR, Nexus Uni, OmniFile Full Text, and Project Muse. And what's helpful about these is that they search many different subject areas. So those are listed here too. Project Muse includes things from the arts, humanities, and social sciences, from nearly 30 university presses, et cetera, et cetera. JSTOR covers all of these different topic areas. So this is really helpful, especially if you have a topic that say bridges different subject areas, you know, maybe like we've been looking at an environmental science topic. It's going to bridge potentially ecology, agriculture, uh, history, science. So these databases can be a great way to find um, articles that come from different subject areas if you're looking at a broader topic. Uh, we'll start off maybe with OmniFile Full Text and show you a bit about how that works. Now, the interfaces for all of these databases look different, but the general principles are the same. We were looking at those reference databases first to get a sense of you know, how broad our topic should be, how specific our topic should be. But we were also looking at those reference databases to get some good key terms. And we could also have picked up some more key terms along the way when we were looking at books and eBooks. And you wanna have those key terms ready because these databases contain thousands and thousands and thousands of articles. And if you're not searching the right terms, you're going to be overwhelmed with results and not know where to start. Now also all these databases have tools available to tell the database how to search and how to limit your search options or expand your search options. So it's not like Google where there's just a single search bar and you kind of have to take whatever they give. On these databases, you can select fields to search. Again, this is potentially a really long and confusing list. You can combine different search terms with these multiple bars. And there are all these options down below for um, refining your results. What I like to do in OmniFile especially is before I even type anything in up here, I'll come down to these search options and apply some uh, suggestions. So first is this also search within the full text of the articles. That seems self-explanatory, but what it really means is it's telling the database to not only look for whatever you type in, in the title of the article or the abstract of the article, but to actually search the full text of any given article for those search terms. So this means if, say, we're looking at deforestation and it's not in the title of the work, but it's in a paragraph somewhere within the work, it'll still come up. You can also limit your results to full text only. Um, not all of the articles listed in these databases let you read the whole thing, uh, which seems kind of counterintuitive, but it's a helpful way of tracking down uh, references. So when you're doing general research, it's a good idea to check full text so you know you can actually read the thing you're looking for. 
And also it's a good idea when you're in these databases to check scholarly peer-reviewed journals. Um, most of the time your instructor in any given class will be asking you to look at peer-reviewed journals only. And this means that these journals where the articles have been published have a panel of peer reviewers, other academics in that subject field who read the article and review it before it gets published. So they generally attest to the accuracy of uh, not only the information published in that article, but also the methods the author of that article used for their research or for their, for their writing. So these are going to give you the highest quality and most reliable um, academic articles. So those three things are what I like to check. Full text of the articles, full text, and scholarly peer-reviewed journals. So now we can come back up here and try searching. Let's do deforestation again. Again, it gives you those suggested terms which you can use or not, depending on you know, how you're going about this. And I'll just leave this in select a field. So that means it'll search all of these fields in addition to the full text of the article. We could limit it to title or to subject if we wanted to get a little more specific. Uh, but for now, I'll leave it general so you can see just how many results show up. So that gives us 6,858 articles that are tagged with the word deforestation, which is way too much for anyone to go through. And this is after we've already applied some of these limiters to make the results even fewer. So do you think you want to go through 6,858 results to find the articles that are good for you? Absolutely not. Well, chances are these databases sort by relevance, and this works a lot better than the catalog. So you might find really good ones on the first page or two of results without having to go through all 6,000. What's a better idea, probably, is to add in other search terms to bring this number down, or to use more of these tools on the left to refine your results. So if we're looking at deforestation or you know any given topic where we want the most current results, we could again slide this up and say maybe we want things just since the year 2000, so in the past 20 years. And we'll see how this brings it down. So now that brought it down to 6,172. Not a lot less, but uh, still a difference. We could limit these to the type of source. So probably we want just academic journals, not reviews or magazines. Brings it down to 5,000. We could pick a specific subject that they have listed here. So these are tags that are put on these articles by the database. Uh, we could click, say, climate change, and we can click multiple ones of these. So now we're looking at deforestation in relation to climate change, and that brought us down to 349 results. So that's much, much more manageable. And actually, 349 is a really good number for OmniFile because it's very hard to get your results down that low. So this might be a good point at which to look through these results. And if we were specifically interested in deforestation as it relates to climate change, Chances are, on the first couple of pages, we'll get some good results here. And again, you see, like, now deforestation is not necessarily showing up in the title. This is why it was a good idea to leave that option uh, a little more open-ended. And these are coming from all different kinds of areas. So as you're looking through these results, again, like in the catalog, it'll give you the title, it'll give you the author, it'll give you some subjects. What you want to pay attention to for a lot of these is where the article was published. This is in the Pace Environmental Law Review. This is from Ecology and Society. And as we were talking about in the, the Credo Reference Database, you want to pay attention to where these are coming from, where these have been published, because that gives you a sense of the perspective from which the author is writing. So if the author is writing in an Ecology and Society journal, that gives you a sense of the topic area. If they're writing in an environmental law journal, well, that's probably going to talk more about the legal ramifications of deforestation and climate change. This can also be a way to pay attention to any potential bias you might come into because authors and academics writing in different areas, you know, inherently have some bias toward that subject area. So when you're doing research, it's a good idea to make sure your sources are coming from different kinds of publications and from different authors. You wouldn't want to rely solely on um, articles published by a single author or published in a single journal because that might be too narrow a scope and you're only getting one point of view that way. So see there have been a couple already from Ecology and Society, but we wouldn't want to rely maybe too much. Of course there can be exceptions to this if you're working in a really niche subject area and that's something that you should discuss with your instructor 
about how to balance finding a diverse set of resources versus enough resources in any given area. So that's one thing you want to pay attention to. Um, say we find one of these that we're interested in. We'll click on this one. And this brings us to the listing for this article. We could go right to the PDF full text here. This is how we actually read the article. It should pull it up for us. And it'll look basically just like it would have looked in print. It should give you page numbers to help you with citations. And you could read things this way. Let's go back to the result list. And click on another one so you can see how that looks. So aside from the PDF full text, again, it gives you the title, the authors, where it was published, the subject it's been tagged with, and then it'll give you this abstract, which is really helpful when you're doing article research because this tells you basically a brief summary of the article. So without having to get into reading anything, by reading this abstract, it can give you a good sense of whether or not it's relevant to your research. Um, and this can save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches because you can quickly skim through this and see, okay, is this something I wanna read further or is it not? EBSCO also gives you these tools on the right to uh, save something to Google Drive, to a local folder on EBSCOhost, to print, email, save, or get a citation for this article. So you click that and here it gives you the citations for this in many different citation styles, including Chicago, Harvard, MLA, APA. And it also gives you a permalink to the article. Again, like I said, use any kind of permalink or stable link that the database provides to get back to this page in case you lose your spot. This is the link you want to use. On any of these databases, it's sometimes helpful to set up an individual account. So even though we're logged in through Rosemont's access, you can see there's a button here to sign in. I could set up a personal account on EBSCOhost so that as I'm doing research, I save things to my personal account in this folder and keep track of things that way. So you see, I added this to the folder up here. This is helpful if you're going through many articles at once and don't want to lose any uh, lose track of any of them. You can save them to your folder and then have a big list kept in your private account. So that's another helpful tool in EBSCOhost. Now, OmniFile is not the only database that EBSCOhost provides access to. Again, we showed the um, ebook database in the previous video. But if you're back on the main search, you can click Choose Databases and see the full list of databases that EBSCOhost lets you search. You could, if you wanted to, search all the databases at once. But again, this is going to cover some uh, potentially random subject areas. Although in EBSCO, they also have access to GreenFile. So because we're looking at environmental science, GreenFile could be a good one to look at. And it gives you a bit of a description of what it's about. So that's how that works. Now, I'll show you another big article database that I find really helpful, and that's JSTOR. What's a little different about JSTOR from OmniFile is that JSTOR is what they call an archival database. So whereas OmniFile will have um, more recent coverage of journals and articles published in journals, say within the past 5, 10, 20 years, including ones um, that go back to 1982, as it says here, JSTOR is archival, which means it contains articles going back potentially even over 100 years. Uh, the flip side of that is that many of the journals on JSTOR do not have current issues available for you to look at. So you might only be able to look at journals that are older than three years old or something like that. And it's different for every journal, which can get a little confusing. And that's also why it's a good idea to use our electronic journal locator to see if you're not getting access to something you should be. But this is basically how JSTOR works. Again, it says access provided by Rosemont College, which is a good thing to pay attention to in general. And unlike EBSCO, JSTOR just brings you to this basic search bar. So I like to go straight to advanced search here. And here this will look a little bit more like what EBSCO provides access to. So here, keyword, you can link multiple keywords together. You can change it to content you can access or all content. By default, it's on content you can access, which is what I like to keep it at. No sense in finding articles you can't actually read. And you can narrow your results. So we could look specifically at articles instead of reviews. JSTOR does also have some eBooks available. So if you didn't find any eBooks in our other eBook collections, you might wanna look here. You can limit it to language. You know, JSTOR contains many different languages and many different publications. So if you primarily speak English, you can link that here. 
You can set the publication date. So if you want to look at things that were, say, only published before 1990, you could go from the beginning of time to 1990, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And below, it gives you different subject areas that you can search and the different journals that are indexed under each subject area. So this is, these are all different ways to kind of limit your results. Uh, because like OmniFile, JSTOR contains thousands and thousands of articles, and uh, it can be really overwhelming if you don't know what you're looking for. But to begin, we'll try deforestation and see what comes up here. Again, we'll search in all fields. Now, because in OmniFile, we found that climate change is maybe a good thing to search with uh, deforestation, and here we're getting over 4,000 results, maybe we will want to use this tool on the left to search within our results for climate change. And this will bring that number down. Oh, it looks like climate change actually is in most of those. Let's see if that actually went through. Well, it seems like something with that tool isn't working right now. But another way to do that is to go back to the advanced search and instead of searching just deforestation, we could search deforestation and climate change and do that right from the beginning. When you link two terms by the and, that means that any article that shows up must contain both deforestation and climate change. Now the numbers went up significantly because we didn't recheck those other limiting options. So we want journals and we want, uh, let's say only until 1990. And let's search. And that brings it way, way, way down to under 2000. So you can use different combinations of these tools to find the articles you need. And what I'll say is that there's no one right way to do any given search. You can link together multiple search terms. You can use these tools to search within your results. Um, but it's good to play around with things, see what works, see what doesn't. Um, try checking certain things, unchecking others, and see how your results change. It's a lot of trial and error, and it's the kind of thing you need to spend time with on your own to figure out. Uh, but to show you a little bit more about how the articles themselves work, I'll pull up this first one, Amazon Deforestation and Climate Change. Now on JSTOR, it gives you a preview of the article as a PDF on the front page. And here again is that abstract, which is like a summary you can read to make sure that you want to continue reading on. The stable URL, publication information, so this came from the uh, journal Science from March 16th, 1990 and these are the authors. What I like to do with JSTOR is to download the PDF. You have to accept their terms. And here, once we've opened the PDF, what I like to do is to search within the article. So this one's only five pages, but some articles in JSTOR will be 20, 30, 40, 50 pages long. And instead of reading the whole thing, what you can sometimes do is just use a search tool in your browser. Depending on what browser and what system you're using, it could be Command F or Control F, which means find. And you can type in a search term here. So say we want to find exactly where the term climate change appears in this article. We'll type that in and search. It comes up two times in the title, it looks like, and right there. Huh, strange. They don't actually mention it in the article itself, just in the title. We can search deforestation to find exactly where those terms show up uh, here. And we see it highlights different terms as it appears in the article, deforestation in all these places. So this is a helpful way to hop around through an article to find those areas you especially want to read and sift through. Because when it comes down to it, the articles that are in JSTOR and OmniFile are written for an academic audience. They are written for professionals doing research in these areas. So you might find that some of these are written in highly technical language and using a search term uh, tool like this means you can kind of skip through and skim to some of the more relevant areas to see before you dig in too deeply into an article whether or not it's really relevant to your research because 
there's enough you have to do with research in general and making it more difficult on yourself by reading every single article you come across is not the smartest way to go about it. So use these search terms, use these tools to limit your results and good luck with your research. That about covers it for what I'm going to show you in this library orientation series. I know there is plenty more to go through and as you do your own research, you'll come across uh, problems that you'll need troubleshooting and help with. Um, don't forget to always use the Ask a Librarian tool here to uh, submit your questions to us or to use the reference at rosemont.edu email address to ask us questions online. And also be on the lookout in your Canvas shells for the First Year Connection seminar for the Virtual Reference Desk, which is where you'll find links to library resources related to your course. And you'll find a discussion board that we'll be checking regularly where you can ask specific questions to your class and I would really encourage you as you're doing research to use that discussion board in your Canvas shell to help each other out. If you found a research tool or topic that you're really excited about or that you think is a really helpful tool for others to have access to, go ahead and share that research, resource with each other and, and help each other out. But we'll also be monitoring those discussion boards to answer any questions and help you troubleshoot problems you're having with library research. But again, always start in the library website and use these links and you should be golden. Good luck and I'll be talking to you later.